Hey everybody, my name is Jason. I'm Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Eli. And we are the Yahoo and the Torah channel. And I will scoot back and the boys will scoot forward so that we are, that I am not blasting you guys out. And it is a what day today, Eli? Preparation day. What does that mean, Jade? It is the sixth day. It is the day before Shabbat. It is the day we prepare for the Shabbat and do what we need to do today so that we don't have to work tomorrow. It's almost like a pre-party day. This is the day that we know... We're getting ready for the party. Yes, we, and it's the end. It's the end of this week. It is the time that we start winding down. It is the time that we start getting everything prepared. And it is going to be, hopefully, a wonderful day for everybody out there. And hopefully as you guys get into Shabbat, that you guys find the Shalom of Yah, that you are able to seek His Word, that you're able to find it, that you have the Ruha Kadesh upon you, and that uh, we are all able to have the spirit of wisdom to give us enormous amounts of wisdom. All right, so with that, how are you guys doing? Good. good. Everyone good? good. Yep. No, no, no anger out here today? No. Nope. Nope. Right. Everybody handy, dandy, happy? Yep. I believe so. Okay, that's good. All right, so let's get in. Let's get into this first. I want to take us quickly into, um, actually before that, let's go into this. I want to go over a couple of uh, uh, messages from a, a sis of ours, um, Sayo Erase, because I thought they were interesting. And when I find interesting messages, I'd like to reply to them uh, in a video. And also, if there's information that everybody can use, um, I would like that there. So th let's listen to this and, and um, let's hear this first. Not sure if you know this, you most likely do, but here it is, John 1, 14. Yeshua is the Word made flesh. I take this to mean in the beginning there was the Word, and the Word was with Yahuwah. Yeshua was with Yahuwah. At that time, he was the angel of Yahuwah. Okay, let's pause on that part. All right, let's not pause, let's go back. When Mary was made to be pregnant with Yeshua, he came and was made flesh. So when... We do our best to walk in Torah. We are following after Yeshua to make our Heavenly Father happy with us. I am a simple woman. My goal in this life is to please Yahuwah. I care not why he asks us to do anything. Children who ask their parent why usually irritates their parent. I do not wish to irritate the father. So this was, this was absolutely beautifully written. Um, the one point that I don't know if... I, I don't think anyone knows. I do not believe that Yahushua was an angel. I don't I don't believe that. I believe he was the son of the Most High. And I do know that um, the Jehovah's Witnesses, they believe that Messiah Yahushua was actually uh, Archangel Michael. And so that's, that's their thing. And you have to dig real deep. You have to find what they believe when they believe that. But I do not believe that he was an angel. I believe that the Father and the Son existed long before any of our creation, right? Before Moses, before any, anything was ever out there, I believe Yah has whatever, I, a family. I don't know if he has a wife. I, I don't know what he has. But we do know that it is his son, and it has always been his son. I found no references to Yahushua being an angel, um, and, and, I, and I don't know. I mean, it, it, if somebody has any kind of, of uh, scriptures or something of the sort which would, uh, you know, lead us to him being an angel. I, I don't believe that is the case. I believe in the Shemaim in heaven, um, wherever Yah dwells is, um, that is where he had his son. And yes, his son was with him prior to this and his son either grew up with him or a son understood, but the Torah, um, is what was made flesh. And it's not that a lot of people, the Christians will take that, that verse right there. John 1, 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and then John 1, 14, and the word was made flesh. They will say, oh, look, that Yah Yahweh and Yahushua are the exact same people, but you have to study to show yourself approved unto our creator, a workman who needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And when you read it over and over and over, like simply reading the book of John and 1 John, it, Yahushua says, I am the son, and they accuse him of being the son of Elohim, and and, you know, the, the only part where the Pharisees are like, well, he's lifted himself up to be equal with Yahweh, with Yah, Yahuwah. And that he never did, just saying you're the son. And he's, he's never taken glory for being the father. He's never said, yeah, that's me or anything of the sort. In fact, he, our Messiah would be a filthy liar if Yahuwah and Yahushua were the exact same being. Because over and over and over, we are led to believe by his own words that he is the son and not the father and the father is, is not the son and, and vice versa. So anyway, I want to touch up on that one. And the second one right here 
Um, this is what she says. Faith is a verb. You say you have faith and I have works. I say I will show you my faith by my works. All right. Who, who quoted that? Uh, it's uh, James. Yaakov. Yeah, James. Um, I keep Torah to my best ability to show my faith. Now, I'm a little disappointed my faith is not able to move mountains. And then she has a sad face. So what, what do you guys have to say to that? Uh, you have to have the faith of a mustard seed. There can't be any doubt in your mind to move a mountain. Yeah, I mean, you can't have any doubt. I, I mean, I believe that if a mountain needed to be moved, and I, it, Yah's, Yah would do that for us. I mean, that, that, is, that is what faith is like. So I do believe that we can move mountains. So this is what she said. Oh, I wanted to tell you that Yahuwah healed me of diabetes. I eat very little grains, vegetables, and fruit. I eat dairy and meat. I did this for two years, then slowly added in a little more grains and vegetables. I have bad nerve damage, so I can barely stand and walk. Yahuwah has healed me. No medicine, no finger pokes, no nothing. Just diet. It might help you. More meat. Now, here in the USA, the food is really bad. I, I can't grow food for my family, so we pray for clean, healthy food. We eat Torah clean food, but everything is contaminated through. through. Yahuwah has kept us fed and healthy. Praise Yah. Shalom. Yeah, and um, that, that's, you know, I put this information out there for those with diabetes or those who are struggling with it and those who are, um, uh, you know, type, I don't know anything about type 1 diabetes. I do know about type 2 diabetes, and I do know that you can completely cure. It's not cure. I don't know if it's curable, um, but you can contain it. Um, we are able to contain it, and um, unless I eat my wife's ginger snap uh, date cookies, which were not supposed to affect me, and they completely rocked my blood sugar levels. Uh oh, Nicole's on her way over here. Go ahead, tell me. If you would have only had one or two. Yeah, I don't know what moderation is, and I haven't had like anything sweet for a very long time. And she brought out this plate of like almond uh, date cookies, and um, I went to town. And my blood sugar popped off, and I've been able to contain it for a very, very long time. So it's my fault, not my wife's delicious date cookies. But I haven't had anything good for a while. And so um, that is an answer to my question is, are, 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 do you ever get healed? I don't know if you ever get healed. I do know that uh, I've been doing super, super good for a very, very, very long time. And as long as I keep my diet right um, and I de eat zero sugar, no nothing, then we got it. So thank you very much, uh, Sayo Erased, on that for um, commenting on this. One other thing I want to pull us into real quick was Nicole was just over there dialing these laws in. And so I haven't we, finished it yet either. I'm still it, working it. Okay. We're still working it. So we're still fleshing this stuff out. And so commandment 50, 50 is don't eat the fat. And I believe we end up with more of those today, I think, is, is, is if I remember right. And then uh, 51, return. What is your neighbor's? 52 is obey Yah's dietary laws. And we're trying to flesh this out so that we have just a simple little list, but we have all these supporting um, verses underneath of this. And so um, we will get that just dialed in so it's a nice, pretty list. And then the 53 was obey Yah's hygiene laws. And that has to do with men and women being uncling and times are uncling and things of that nature. Um, when to touch, when not to touch, that kind of stuff. Um, and then 54 yesterday was the one that we got, uh, our new commandment. And so keep the day of atonement. So Probably if you add up the dietary laws and the hygiene laws, I mean, we might be possibly around 80 or 90 right now, 90 laws, but um, we're going to put these to where we can all figure this stuff out. All right. So with that, gentlemen, you're real quiet. Hey, I, yeah, to you I, told, I told you guys not to talk. Uh, just kidding. Uh, there's not a lot for us to say at that part. You're Nothing? Kind of overviewing it. So. Nothing. All right. Here we go. All right. So this is Leviticus 7. Let's figure out what Yah has for us today and see if we can figure this out, dial it in. Um, anyone have anything good? Anyone have anything? Um, no. We just did Yahoo, uh, Youth for Yah. Youth for night. Yah. How did that go? Um, uh, not great, actually. Um, we were trying to do it live, but the internet cut out, so we did re-record it offline and upload it. But Yeah, we're literally in the middle of a jungle with a hijacked kind of looking um, way antenna way up. It's, it's a cell phone that we've, we've modified, per se. And um, and it's it's sitting on a pole, and sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. So um, we will try it a couple more times. But oh, we had something very exciting in two weeks coming. Um, I came up with a great idea, and the boys I don't know if they thought it was a great idea, but I thought it would be a lot of fun. We are going to be doing Youth for Yah in Espanol. Yeah, and, we talked about that last night. Yep. Yeah, okay. And so I didn't know if you guys talked about I that. I did the not. end of it. So. And so yeah, we are going to be doing we uh. The boys are fluent in Spanish, and so I do not want to take those gifts that Yah has given us, uh, which are gifts are youth. Youth are able to do anything, and us old folks and codgers, you know, trying to get multiple languages going. It's uh, 
Uh, well, you know, we're old folks. Folks. So anyway, um, we're going to be doing it in Spanish um, and try to reach out to anybody in Spanish. So we're going to start over with Proverbs 1, but it'll all be in Spanish. So for the majority of you guys, if you only speak one language, this is not for you. For anybody that speaks Spanish, we're going to try to build up those who are out there who are seeking ya in Espanol. All right, let's begin. Leviticus 17. And Yahuwah, oh, and let me preface this by saying I tried to read this chapter and I have absolutely no idea what this very first thing is all about. So as you guys read this with me, I have no idea why this whole sacrifice thing is going on. So I couldn't explain it to myself or anybody. So let's read it. Hopefully the Ruhak will be able to help us out. All right. And Yahuwah spoken to Moshe saying, speak unto El Eron and unto his sons and unto all the children of Yashrael and say unto them. This is the thing which Yahuwah has commanded saying. And hold on, this this start it says eating blood forbidden. So that's the that's the title of this in the NIV. What man soever there be of the house of Yashrael that kills an ox or lamb or goat in the camp, or that kills it out of the camp, and brings it not unto the door of the tabernacle of the assembly to offer an offering unto Yahuwah before the tabernacle of Yahuwah. Blood shall be imputed unto that man. He has shed blood, and that man shall be cut off from among his people. All right, so I have two thoughts on that. Right. Uh, one, it, mine says slaughters. If he slaughters a bull, one, he could be trying to do his own sacrifices. Mm. He could be trying to sacrifice it himself. Yeah, that's kind of two, he, he was supposed to offer up to Yahuwah a bull, but he did not, but he, but he killed it himself to eat it himself instead of actually doing the sacrifice. And someone found out about it that he was not doing the sacrifice he was supposed to be doing. Yeah, I think if you're bringing this to Levi's you know sacrifice, I don't think you should. I mean, if you kill so him, these guys were trying to, to. I think they were trying to do the own sacrifice, like rip Abra you off. Abraham and maybe not rip him off. Maybe they were trying to do it themselves, but they weren't ordained to do it at that time. Now they have rules and regulations on how sacrifices should go. So, but they thought they could do it themselves, as Abraham and Noah and all the ancient people did back then. All right, let's let's continue on and see if that um, thought holds up. Okay, to the end that the children of Yashrael may bring their sacrifices, which they offer in the open field, even that they may bring them unto Yahuwah, unto the door of the tabernacle of the assembly, unto the priests, and offer them for peace offerings unto Yahuwah. So basically, I don't know, maybe you can kill your own animal, then bring it to the temple, but if you don't bring it, then you're a sinner. I don't know, we got, we got our... In the Amplified, it says, This is so the Israelites, rather than offer their sacrifices to idols in the open field where they slew them, may bring them to Yahuwah at the door of the tent of the meeting to the priest to offer them as a peace offering to Yahuwah. So these guys sacrificed the idols and then they brought that into Yah? They didn't, but they're supposed to. They're supposed to bring what? See, I don't I don't understand this. Why would we ever be sacrificing to but idols? they shouldn't have been sacrificing to idols to begin with. All right, I talk about that in the next few verses about slaughtering two other things. All right. And the priest shall sprinkle the blood upon the altar of Yahuwah at the door of the tabernacle of the assembly and burn the fat for a sweet savor unto Yahuwah. And they shall no more offer their sacrifices unto devils, after whom they have gone a whoring. This shall be a statute forever unto them throughout their generations. So I feel like that's a command, that we shouldn't do slaughterings to demons. Yeah, and well, I, and I says well goat we shouldn't be doing sacrifices, I don't believe. Yeah, no. But I mean, here, here's the gig, is what, what has happened from verse 16 to 17, uh, these people just ran out in the field and started killing stuff to Moloch or well, something? Well, they, they all lived in Egypt. They, none of them knew Yah at that time. You, you see Moses, he didn't even know Yah for a long we're, time. We're, they know Yah now. They know him now. I mean, but they, they, they all drank some gold dust. Uh, yeah, they, <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. They they made idols. They were, like, sacrificing. So if they're sitting there out there slaughtering the idols, you know, like, stop people from slaughtering the idols. This is not... But good. then he has them bring that sacrifice in he's like whatever they sacrifice I think it's if you're uh, gonna try and sacrifice to an idol just bring it to him instead and shouldn't you just pick up them. rocks and kill these people if they were sacrificing to idols yeah, I think that's probably the best I mean option. person gets kicked out of the camp if uh, you do that it'd well, be a we, sacrifice from up from the verses above yeah so okay well the NIV doesn't say devil it says goat idols goat idols well, like yeah Baphomet. Baphomet yeah that's their goat god Fol they well, love that thing Moloch? Is he a goat idol? Uh, he's he's just a demon looking thing. He's an owl. Mine says goat like gods or demons. Yeah, they're goat god. They or love it. Or spirits. Yeah, and so those who do not know who Baphomet is, it is the... Um, it's the goat god. That all this, <laughs> it's all the Satanists worship. It's half man, half woman. And it has like a... Half goat. Yeah, half goat. And it's, it's just... It's a very vile thing. It's a vile looking thing. And, you know, there that's... Uh, I guess if there's a picture of what Satan may look like, I mean, it could very well be. It's hideous. 
Definitely a hideous looking thing. All right. Uh, did I do something? Mm -hmm. All right. Eight. And you shall say unto them. So hold on. We got a command back here. I thought like I mean, no, no, slaughtering the demons. I mean, I feel like we shouldn't be slaughtering two demons. Well, you we shouldn't. That's obvious. There shall be no other Elohim before Yah. I mean, even the thought of slaughtering two, like, another Yah, uh, another Elohim is bad news. Yeah. That's, um, I mean, that's, how is that even holy? But, I mean, he had to tell them this again. Like, he had to tell them, don't, uh, I was, then don't slaughter to them. These people are out in the field or something, slaughtering it up or something. Something had to happen for this to happen right here. Yeah, I don't know. All right. Well, I, I I don't know. Whatever's going on, we do not have too much context. But I, I as far as command goes, I mean, yeah, we shouldn't be slaughtering to demon. I thought that was a given. Do we need to actually have a command? Don't hey, if you decide to go into an open field to kill your goat, don't uh, do it. Yeah, to, the uh, thunder and cloud and lightning wasn't enough for them saying don't. I feel like it have should. Any I feel like it should be command. Like Anyone else on this command? I mean, how? Why would we slaughter? I mean, these are we're trying to do things that we are to do today. If you're gonna, sl I mean, you shouldn't be slaughtered at all. We know a strange fire. All right. Right. I mean, I think that's what it says up top. Uh, the first few verses of this is when they try and slaughter a bull or a lamb, and it does not go into the can end of the, the tent of appointment. I can't believe y'all would even accept this this offering that was made to an idol or something of the sort. I I, just, I guess maybe I'm missing. Maybe we're missing. Something. I don't, I don't here, think. Let me read mine. Right. And let them no longer slaughter their slaughterings to demons after whom they hoard. This is a law forever to, for them throughout their generations. All right. So that should be a commandment. It says right there. Let them no longer slaughter. Don't idols. slaughter anything to demons. That's got to be commanded for fifty-five. It says for all generations, right? So that is something. All right, you're right, Jobs. Good job. All right. So, but that goes back to the entire thing of. Uh, I don't think he's accepting the slaughterings of idols because here it says. I mean, the way they have to kill this animal with the priest holding on to it and the, the the whole ceremonial side of it, I can't believe you would take you would drag like an idol sacrifice into. This. I, don't, I, don't, I don't think you are. I don't because in mine it doesn't say anything about having them bring it to Yah. Instead, it just says let them no longer slaughter their slaughterings of demons. But I, I just I can't like, believe I, these people are thick headed. I don't understand. They, they have like I mean they literally went to exile. So many have to break these commands. They were in exile four hundred years. So they grew up in, in, in a culture right in Egypt, and where then they had all of this. And then afterwards, they had all these commands. They still went and broke these commands. They still slaughtered. They two couldn't other get idols. it though. And I mean, but Yah was walking with them. And I mean, I guess once it's in the blood, it's in the blood. It took us years to get rid of Christmas, right? It's like we talked about the last night, pagan that was. Yeah, and so it took us. I mean, Nicole was the one that she she felt bad at first, but then <laughs> once we stopped. Keeping Christmas and all that jive, all that pagan garbage, we don't even do it. You know, people, I don't even think our family wishes us Merry Christmas anymore because we never respond to them. Uh, have a good day. We don't know what to say to them. So, um, yeah, okay. Let's roll. Eight. And you shall say unto them, Whatsoever man there be of the house of Yashrael or of the strangers which sojourn among you that offers an ascending smoke offering or sacrifice... And brings it not unto the door of the tabernacle of the assembly to offer it unto Yahuwah, even that man shall be cut off from among his people. Okay, so I think I am correct with the first assumption of the first verses. Well, Good. talk in the mic so we can all hear this. Uh, what what are you correct about? Uh, where it says if you if you do a sacrifice and don't bring it to the tent, you are to be cut off. Yeah, from but the he's people. who's sacrificing outside the Levites? They would have to have Levites. That's the out thing there. they're trying to do their own sacrifice. They think they're the man. Like you know, how Korah thought he was the man, and yeah. they're just thinking they're like, oh, we can do this too. Huh. Okay. Well, I feel like at one point they thought like maybe the uh, priests were just useless. They didn't need them, and so they thought they were just gonna do. I it mean, what if they own. didn't have a priest around in that area? Well, that's why the Levites are supposed to be around everybody. I mean, that's the whole tribe was. They're supposed to infiltrate everybody, and they're supposed to be priests everywhere that can deal with this stuff. But I mean, if you're talking about some guy just going in a field and then offering up to some Elohim somewhere, that just sounds bad news. Bad news, Brown here. All right. All right. So. That offers an ascending smoke off, sacri offering or sacrifice and brings it not to the door of the tabernacle of the assembly to offer it unto Yahuwah, even that man shall be cut off from among his people. And whatsoever man there be of the house of Yashrael or of the strangers that sojourn among you that eats any manner of blood, I will even set my face against that soul that eats the blood and will cut him off from among his people. Now, Nicole, that needs to go into our blood. Don't eat the blood. Um, or Eli, anybody yep, with me? Mm -hmm. All right, Nicole's got this. Oh, I love my wife. She's so good. All right. For the soul of the flesh is in the blood. He and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. It says he and I? Uh, did it? He and I. Mine says and I. He and I. Who's he and I? Who's he and I? 
Uh, yeah, 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 what does it say over here? So in the king, it says, for the soul of the flesh is is in the blood, and I have given it to you. Yeah. That doesn't sound right. He and I, that can't be right. He and I. It's 11. Stephen Pigeon's gone awry with this Steve, one again. Stephen's gone to the dark side. He and I. And the, yeah, I mean, that's wrong. Yeah, that's, that's incorrect. So there's more inconsistencies, and I would send it to the Suffer guys, but they, they didn't seem to care last time, or maybe they do. Maybe it's just too businesslike to actually, like, make it a human response. But, um, and then we had a whole bunch of people selling Suffer stuff on the on our on our uh, channel yesterday. Why? Yeah, there was a bunch of guys coming in trying to sell Suffer Bibles. I had to block them. They, in like, the comments? All over yeah. the place. Yeah, they were selling, like, come buy your Suffers here. I'm like, this can't be the real Suffer people. So it was like people... Trying like, to scam it out. Scam, Not yeah, click to, anything in the yeah, comments. Don't, it's, yeah. It should be common knowledge, but for those who thought it was real Suffer... Do not click anything. Don't in click the links. Don't go yeah, click links. Yeah, same for your email. It may say you ordered something from Amazon, and you're like, "What is this?" Don't click the link. Don't do anything. It's, it's all like, a scam. Click the don't link. Don't talk to a stranger. Internet etiquette, but that's for another subject. Yep. Yeah. All right. So let's so it, let's go back into this real quick. For it is the blood of him that makes atonement for the soul. So it's definitely not he and I. That is, I. This is just. It's one of those translation things again. He and I. Who's he and I? I uh, mean, it's just completely. I. Yahush. It should be only Yahoo that gave the blood. That I would think. Yeah, so that's that's incorrect. Bad, bad translation. All right. Um, for it is the blood of him that makes an atonement for the soul. Therefore I said unto the children of Yashrael, No soul of you shall eat blood. There is another verse for you, Nicol. Neither shall any stranger that sojourns among you eat blood. I think all the rest of them are about this. And whatsoever man there be of the children of Yashrael or of the strangers that sojourn among you, which hunts and catches any beast or fowl that may be eaten, he, he he shall even pour out the blood thereof and cover it with dust. Okay, so this is this is basically saying if you kill anything and you dump the blood on the ground, you need to cover that blood with dust. Why is that? Um, because that's life. Life. I mean, what would it do here in the jungle for us? I Attract could, uh, like birds, bugs, and lots uh, of stuff. Even if you bury it, it still attracts the bugs. So something about the smell of blood is wild to these animals. All right, 15. And every soul that eats that which died of itself, this is interesting. I found this very interesting. And every soul that eats that which was died of itself or that which was torn up with beasts, whether it be one of your own country or a stranger, he shall both wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until even, then shall he be clean. Okay, but if he wash not them not, nor bathe his flesh, then he shall bear his iniquity. So this is interesting here. So this gave us a little more insight into, I guess, if we're starving to death and we have to eat a, a chunk of torn up something. Can't be that good. Huh? It, yeah, it's probably not going to be good. And in 15 minutes, it eats a carcass. Eats a carcass, so yeah. And any being who eats a carcass. So let's let's talk about that real quick because we, we know that we're not supposed to eat. Car I mean, to touch. we're not supposed to touch a carcass. Let alone we're not, eat it. Let alone eat it. Um, but what, I mean, here's, here's where it says, I mean, you're not, it, you basically, you're just unclean. Right. I mean, you might get some serious stomach issues. I don't know. I don't know that at all, but, um, so that's an amendment or like an addendum to the, um, um, the, the thing about don't eat mm. torn, torn meat. But if you absolutely have to, you should just wash. Wash. You're, you're unclean. So that's yet another that's something else. I don't know where we need to put that. But well, we have another command, right, already? Yeah, don't I mean, it was so. torn, yeah. Torn. And so if we have, we need to add that into the thing. But what happens if you don't wash? It says you, like, bury your iniquity. What does that mean? What does that well, mean? Well, Yah, Yah's going to hold you accountable for it. You will you will be in trouble. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's that. I don't think we have any new commandment. Do we have new commandments? No, we but we don't. have a bunch. Oh, of we do have one, which is don't sacrifice. Oh, right, and, don't sacrifice the devils. And yeah, don't do that. Don't, I would, yeah. don't sacrifice anything. I mean, you shouldn't be sacrificing. Yeah, no, we don't. And why wouldn't we sacrifice? One, we have Yahusha. Two, we're not priests. Yeah, and yeah, absolutely. And so we don't know the right ways of ceremonial. And and you know, even though Yah knows our heart, He has given us a set of laws and, and guidance. That we should keep. Okay. And we talk about how Yah knows your heart, but uh, we also says in Proverbs, which we did yesterday, which uh, there's a way that seems right in a man, but it leads to death. It may be on your heart. It may seem good in your eyes. That's what we talked about Christmas yesterday. Yeah, it seems good. We're celebrating Jesus, the birth of his, but it's still a pagan holiday, and, and it's going to lead yeah, to death. Yeah, Messiah. So. Yahushua was probably born on 9-11, which is crazy enough, but it was probably around September 11th that he was born. 
Um, you know, we've talked about that before that there's, you know, it's too cold to be out in the middle of the field in, in winter. Um, so those kind of things, but yeah, they all lead us to that. All right, gentlemen, anything else? We have a Shabbat coming up tomorrow. Let's, let's touch on Shabbat. Let's, let's talk about this a little bit real quick. Shabbat is a mark of Yah upon the believer. It is essentially what he says. I mean, let's go into a little bit about Sabbath. Uh, it's possibly the most important command Yah has given us. It's something that was the, that was most repeated throughout the Bible was keep the Shabbat, keep the Shabbat, keep my Shabbat. In Nehemiah, it was talked about several times over. Um, it was just it was talked about so much. It's got to be one of the most important things. And for him just to throw it away after struggling through, what is it? How many other books in the Old Testament? I forgot how many. It was, it was 30, 39, 39, 20, 39 in the Old and 27 in the yeah. New. After 30, after 39 books of uh, struggling to get people to follow Shabbat and then just throwing it away four books later just seems a little uh, insane. Yeah, and I did a count on this. Right now I'm looking at um, the Sefer. I did a search for Sabbath. And I did a count the other day, and it's it's over 240 times that Shabbat is mentioned. And if you, you know, you can you can go for days, and it's all about Shabbats, it's all about new moons, and things of this nature. And so, um, you know, it's all, even even the very end of Acts. And, uh, you know, I think, I think the greatest thing that we can, we have that we can look forward to is what I will end this with, and that we will go to this, is, is that in... Revelation fourteen twelve it says, here's the patience of the saints and the Kadeshim. Here are they that guard the commandments of Elohim and the faith of Yahusha. And so what does that say right there, Jade? It says basically the saints are the people who are following the Torah and believe in Yahushua. And it's not just one or the other, it's both. Would we be considered saints? Uh, saints feels like a, almost like a holy word, like... I feel like we're like we have ten pit bulls. I don't think we can be considered saints at all. Yeah, no. we, gets, we have we gets, have our issues. Yeah, we have some serious issues, and um, definitely don't put us on a pedestal at all. So yeah, so here's the patience of the Kadeshim. Here are they that guard the commandments of Elohim and the faith of Yahushua. Almost towards the end of Revelation, I mean, this is this is what this is all about. It is all about getting in line with our Creator and getting our lives and our hearts, our minds, our souls clean. So that we are able to be presentable, an acceptable sacrifice unto Yah, that we are His people, and so um, I guess that's it. I don't have anything else. Does anyone have anything else? Uh, today you should cook all your food, do all your cleaning, all your work. Do yeah. How, how do how do people do that? Right. So let's say, for instance, they want to. If you guys have a crock pot, if you don't have a crock pot, I, I don't make, know what uh, to say. You can make some food there for um, muffins. Like work. Muffins. Yeah, you can do muffins, muffins if you don't have a crock pot. If you have a crock pot, just take a bunch of uh, potatoes and slice them all up and bake them. If you want to bake them, so well, we don't we we bake them because we don't have much power here, and the crock pot takes like a tremendous amount of power. But we bake them in the oven the day before, and then we stick them in the crock pot, and they just throw some cheese on top. Yeah, throw some cheese on top, and they are they're actually really good. I haven't had a potato in like months, but I guess I remember them used to be good. You can also do an overnight French toast with a loaf of bread and eggs. Um, there's many different things that you can do in a crock pot. Yes, yeah, tell us, tell us. I just told well, one of them. There's a couple of them. How about some more? What else can you do? We have uh, oats. Over, you can do overnight oats with just some fruit of some sort and how do, how oats and that? milk. What do they do? Just throw some oats in there, throw some milk in there. Yep. Stir it oats, up. Oats, milk, throw it in, fruit, a little bit of sugar if you want it sweet. If not, leave yeah, that out. You shouldn't leave sugar. Sugar's bad. For honey. You. you can put honey in or any kind of sweetener. Yep. What else? What else have we had for crockpot meals, guys? I've done eggs. cinnamon rolls in crock pots before. We've done eggs. I've done yeah, eggs work out well. Those are pretty good. Like it, well, sometimes they get rubbery, so you yeah, gotta you can't, you can't gotta, cook them too long. Yeah, for um, sure. Potatoes. We do a chia cereal. Yeah, chia cereals was actually kept me alive for my diabetes. So. And that's just a little bit of milk, either a nut milk or a regular milk, and chia seeds with some flax seeds, and I always put cream cheese in it. And that's it. A lot of water. So what are we having for our Shabbat meals? I don't know yet. You haven't figured out? No. Muffins? Probably maybe muffins. The boys I'm also them. I found a right. recipe for a breakfast cookie. Made breakfast with breakfast cookie? Uh huh. Made with honey and oats and peanut butter. That sounds very unhealthy. That sounds delicious. Sounds good. Um, <laughs> I think we're I think we we're all with, that. with raisins. Uh -huh. Or we could do banana crumb muffins or chocolate muffins. And all those sound really, really good, but the uh, 
the big fat guy with diabetes gets none of it. So it's, uh, I'm glad my family gets to eat like this, but just remember to eat in moderation. Don't be a glutton or you'll end up like me. All right, guys. So that's it. Um, much love to everybody out there. Um, huge hugs, grizzly bear hugs, everybody. High fives and um, keep your eyes on the prize. Keep your eyes on the Shamaim. Seek the kingdom first and all his righteousness and everything will be added unto you. Alleluia. Alleluia. Right. Right. Shabbat shalom. Shalom. Bye. Shalom.